<laughs> welcome back to and here's Modi we are in the studio I am sorry Leo is not in uh, you can all start your DMs how much you hate when he's not here right now um, we are here me and Periel are uh, a little catching up before the b- b- began we of course begin by thanking a and H provisions the uh, the best glot kosher meats hot dogs and someone gave me an amazing line at a show they said uh instead of mashiach energy mashgiach energy <laughs> so a and h you are mashgiach energy and, <laughs> and what's the website For, and 30 percent off 30 percent off of uh your first order from them and that that that's mashiach energy <laughs> and now go for uh, uh kosherdogs.net Thank you very much. And of course, we want to thank uh, Weitz and Luxembourg. We had Arthur on and he was a blast. Everybody loved him. Oh my God. Everybody loved Arthur uh, of <laughs> Arthur of Arthur Luxembourg of Weitz and Luxembourg. And he still didn't give us a good tag for, for, for the. So we're going to stick with uh, it's the law firm that's doing well and doing good. Very right. philanthropic. They do a lot of uh, charities. We spoke about them on the podcast. Again, thank you, Weitz and Luxembourg, for being a part and collab and friends and uh, and all that it takes Weitz, to make a podcast. Oh, go ahead. Weitzlux.com. Weitzlux.com. Um, you can get that on Sesame or Rye. No? Um, uh, okay, so we are here in the studio, and we are uh, let me do a little catch up. I got back into the comedy cellar. I've been traveling so much. So much. And then this was the first like weekend and like Sunday and Monday that I was back at the cellar trying out all new material and it was so much fun. I, I, there's new comedians that are working there yeah. that I've, n- I've not seen and I give it to Esty. She finds them, she knows who's, what's happening and she has that, that she has, I don't know where she finds these, the, 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 what's happening in the mm-hmm. comedy world. And it was amazing. I also did an hour. I took an hour at the, um, the West Side Comedy Club to try all new material. Wow, nice. It was so good. First of all, I'm, you know, you get tired of hearing your own act. Yeah. Which I love doing and, I, and it's so easy and I'm in a flow and I give it the energy and I love it and I know where the audience gets hit. And, uh, but to try the new stuff and see where it goes is so much fun. You did a whole brand new a hour? A full hour. Um, yeah, I didn't do anything. I didn't do any old material. It wow. Was, the topics were David Beckham, How Doctors Know Nothing, um, Comparing Catholic and Jewish. Uh, it's just um, so many other little topics that I've just been dying to get out there. And of course, what's happening in Israel a little bit. Yeah. But that, I can't, th- that the comedy cell is much more of a place where you can see where that's going to go or not, because right. that's not only all Jews. Right, right, right. Although last night at the uh, Fat Black Pussycat Lounge, which is a part mm-hmm. of the comedy cellar, I did the material I was doing about about the 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 war Mm -hmm. like i I try not to do it during the during my shows for jewish audiences because just i'm giving them an hour and 15 minutes to not think about it but i was doing all the material about that and this girl comes over afterwards so sweet like if she was 20 21 just so happy you can see the joy there's almost a tear in her eye that i was talking about it and she's a big fan and she gave me the um the the necklace with yeah, the, the bring them home the bring them home necklace yeah. and it was so sweet it was a great way to just end the weekend it's really nice and speaking it's of this weekend it was a well I mean well, my parents celebrated their 60th anniversary wow Mazel tov. my parents celebrated their 60th anniversary and they're the best and they didn't want anything over the top no restaurants no the whole family going on a cruise they just wanted all the kids and grandkids to come in we had shabbat dinner my mother's house and saturday we had sushi at our house she didn't want any restaurants i was like should we do the lounge at second avenue now in the house on top of it and we all yeah because otherwise it's not otherwise groups conversations break out and she uh 
so nice. Even though they were married on the first night of Hanukkah, we had to do it a week before because my niece is on that circuit of weddings and she's booked next week. And um, we made latkes and schnitzels and everything with oil. And we were like, why? We, we, what, what are we doing that for? And my mom said, it's when the grandkids get to play together. So she just liked oh, to watch my the grandkids so catch sweet. up with each other and what are you guys up to? Because some of them live here, some of them live in Houston. Um, it was very, very sweet. I'm I'm grateful. I thank God that we I have my parents and that they were able to to do this and um, and uh, that was kind of the catch up I can give you. Um, what? No, I think it's really incredible that you know you just don't want anything except for anybody except for everybody to be together. I had the best gifts for them. So a few years ago, I mean like five, six years ago, I was in Israel and I see this artist on the street with this picture of somebody diving off a pool. Mm -hmm. And I see it's Brichat uh, Gordon, the, oh. the Gordon pools, which are across the street, for, across the back of the Hilton. Mm, it's uh, sort of like iconic. It's iconic. Yeah. It's no, it's it's like where everybody went in like the seventies. It's a saltwater pool. Yeah, yeah. It's a public pool. I mean, you have to pay it's, it's to not, get no, in. No, it's not a public pool. No, it, no, you can a, buy a ticket. You to can buy go a ticket. In. Yeah. Like, and you don't have to be at the hotel. It has nothing to do with the Hilton. Right. So like has, anybody can right. buy a ticket. Um, but it's still today. It's like if you're going to go to the pool, you need a pool. You go to Goldon. Right. Yeah. So this was. Uh, no, but now they have like racing and training and it's like a very serious now. But back in the day, it was the pool that you went to. You know, this is in the, in the 60s. My parents were married in 1962, I think. Wow. Or something like that. Or, uh, well, 63 no, probably. Three, 63 yeah, whatever, okay. but i was walking in israel and i see this gorgeous picture of this guy diving in the pool and i could tell that it's the gordon pool in the hilton and um i start speaking to him and he says to me my parents met at this pool i go so did mine stop and he had a picture of the pool when the hilton was still under construction which was 1962 stop. so this is exactly the year they met so I had that picture framed beautifully. Oh, I have goosebumps. Yes. That's amazing. And that was uh, very, very nice. And um, it's so funny. My, my parents have been living in their house for 46 years, some mm -hmm. insane amount of time. They're not hoarders, and there's no garbage in the house. Mm -hmm. But there are things that are like things you don't throw away, nice right. little... And we found this little Versace ashtray thing. I, I, my, my sisters were going through everything, just going through the drawers. Each yeah. drawer is packed full of like, but like nice stuff. Yeah. Nice stuff. My mother loves to entertain, so she loves to make a table. So whatever, you know, things yeah, yeah, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. and like we, she found, we underneath the whole, she found this like little ashtray, this Versace ashtray. I don't know where she got, I go, I go to Ima, Ima, go get this to Leo. <laughs> And so she, you might just give me a Versace ashtray. <laughs> it was just so funny. And so I was like, you know, you, you, you know, like God forbid, when, when, you, when your parents die, you have the estate sale. Mm -hmm. I'm like, literally, I'm ready to have the sale tomorrow. Just put tags on everything. And of course, as we say that, we find this these nice tags. My mom always likes to put tags where everybody should sit uh -huh. for her meals, you know. So she had like tag tags. So I was just like, it is so many. She didn't want any gifts. She's no, not, no, she, mom. She's not a person. No, I'm talking about in in this in, in the song Mayida Shemama. Uh -huh. There's a verse. Uh, her jewels and her treasures she finds within her baby's eyes. She does the, the grandkids are there and the kids are there and and everybody getting along. No one's in fights and no one's not talking to each other. And no one's not. It's just that's the best gift you could ever have. That's that is better than money and watches and 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 the plates and shtuyot and. That's all she wanted. And, you know, my, my dad drives um, Leo, Leo's godfather, Manny yeah. and Dee. His godparents gave him this call. When we were first did, did dating and he moved to New York, he goes, do you want a car? His, grandfather, his godfather had this white um, 1999 CLK 320 Mercedes, brand new, like 20,000 miles. And 
my father and my uncle, <clears throat> you know, they had a shop. Yeah. So they we, we brought it up. My father's been driving that car ever since. That's amazing. He's been driving that car. The whole neighborhood knows him. And it, I got plates with his name on it. Stop it. His name is Bitsalil, uh -huh. but everybody calls him Tsali. So I got Tsali on the plates, and it looks so cute. You did not get him vanity yeah. plates. V v vanity plates. That's what they're <laughs> called, vanity plates. <laughs> He is not driving around. And he started to wear the, the watch again, which made me so happy. You know, I redid his watch. Uh huh. And so wh while he while we I redid his watch, I gave him the Se this like the Seiko watch, the, mm. the rubber one. Yeah. And he hasn't taken that off. When I gave him the new one, he wouldn't put the off. I go, do me a favor. And he finally started to wear the watch the again. Rolex? No, it's uh, Audemars Piguet. It's next level. It's, it's it's vintage. It's amazing. And um and so it was a great weekend for me. I, we should talk. We should, should have waited for Leo to talk because he was there too, and we'll he was a big part about, of it. We'll talk about it again with Leo. I'm <coughs> just imagining your father in his fancy watch with his gorgeous vintage white Mercedes yeah. in his A and H jacket. In his A and H jacket <laughs> and hat and all, <laughs> which we should start talking about what we are doing. Yes, we are. I um, I heard that you are extraordinarily excited about our upcoming event. I can't believe it's happening. Mashiach Energy. It's Is that not Mashiach Energy? It's Mashiach Energy. It's iconic. It's iconic. It's iconic. It's the 92nd Street Y. Hudsta Geher, do you hear me? <laughs> what does that mean? In Yiddish, do you hear me? The 92nd Street Y is doing an in conversation with Modi. Yes. And I'm honored to be in the conversation with, <laughs> <laughs> with Periel. I'm um, honored. Wait, I have to read you. What? Have, have you read the history of the 90s? I started. You I know, only like, read what Leo makes me read. I go, I, you know, I do these like deep dives. Yeah. Oh, um, no. Oh, I know. It's. I don't need to read. I've been alive for many years. I've seen who they had there. From Woody Allen to... Forget, to, forget to, that. What? Forget that. No, In go ahead. 1874... 1874, okay. A group of German Jewish professionals used to meet there, led by Dr. Newton Leo. Mm. Um, oh, it was the home of... Okay, one second. I'm fucking this up. Sorry. The she story? won't be cursing at the 92nd Street. Why? Why I'm not allowed to curse? I, could you not curse for that no, 92nd Street? You cannot Street? curse. You're going to be all schmutzy with it? I don't with, know. I'm going to be natural. People like me because I'm authentic. <laughs> 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 Nobody likes me. <laughs> People like you because you're authentic. <laughs> you should put that in a t-shirt. I'm authentic. Like me. <laughs> I can't. Listen, I can be... I'm whatever do, I don't be you, think be that you. Not, I don't think there's anything wrong with cursing. Okay. Okay, the ninth the story of the ninety second Street Y. On March twenty second, eighteen seventy four, in the home of Dr. Newton Leo, a group of German Jewish professionals and businessmen met to explore ways in which they could serve the social and spiritual needs of the American Jewish community. And that's how it was founded. And now it's Modi. No, and now we're doing the same thing. We You're are. doing the same thing. Yeah, but the people that they've had there, it's iconic. I've, I mean, like... Who have they had there that you're excited about? I can't even begin to. First of all, one of my one of my icons, uh, Alan King, was one of the things there. I, I mean, The first time I met him was there. The first really? time I met Alan King was at the 92nd Street Y. What? Tell me what happened. The, we were doing this, they were doing like an in conversation with him, but there was comedy involved too, and they were, they asked me to perform. I have a picture from it. It's, wow. It's, because of him, I used to always wear a bl dark blue suit with a bl dark blue tie and a white shirt. I, because of him, I wore that for years. For years. Why is that what he wore? Oh, that was how was his thing. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's yeah. So he cute. was. I yeah, love yeah. That. And um, uh, come on, Woody Allen's been interviewed there, and uh, I mean, I'm, there's probably better people to. to <laughs> 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 uh, Dershowitz, probably another people, but, uh, but like, no, but like amazing people who've done yes. amazing things, and I, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I feel honored. I'm, it's, yeah. it's an iconic place. It's, it's iconic. Um, it's. It's such a great thing. I'm so happy. And we're going to be in conversation. And the topic is going to be... Is the transformative nature of comedy in dark times for Jews. Yeah. Which is now. Which is, which is, which is now. what's happening now. I was on the phone last night with the Israeli UN ambassador. 
Gilad Ildan because mm-hmm. we're, we're planning on doing an event together and I'm like think you know I see his videos I follow him on Instagram and what he's going through is like he's working in the the if you talk about Jewish hatred I think the UN is the number one place of it mm-hmm. it's it's basically it's the, the hatred's there but they're pretending that they're, they're civilized yeah. and he said to me how are you doing like are you okay performing in these times I'm like me you're the one with the Arab country screaming at you and you're holding up signs and he's I so Gilad Erdan good f- I mean uh, God bless him and ho- I'm trying to get him on the podcast but we're going to be doing an event over there at the uh, at, at the UN soon and so that that's happening I don't know how we got off that I don't know we were, I was trying to get some promo we're lists. no we're in pr- okay promos what yes. are you doing on February 1st Modi February 1st we are at the 92nd Street Y in conversation with who Periel Ashenbrand. I'm almost sure my name should go first. Well, you said I'm in conversation oh. with. That means you're okay. in conversation with me. Should we try, should we try it again yeah, for, for a better click? Okay. <laughs> What's we can that? do a blooper <laughs> <laughs> Okay, go ahead. What's the thing? What's the date? February 1st. February 1st, 2024. Wow, it's around the corner. Oh, my God. I almost corrected you. Why? <laughs> February 1st, 2024. I'm going to be at the 92nd Street Y for an event called In Conversation with Mawa Modi. And uh, I'll be in the conversation with Periel discussing the topic of... The transformative nature of humor in yep. these dark Jewish times. Dark Jewish times, yes. I don't think it's quite like that. Let me get the... <laughs> get, the get the thing. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get it right. Anyway, everybody, it's going to be amazing. And... Um, and Ready? Yeah. As they navigate the complexities of finding light and joy in the midst of rising tensions and anti-Semitism. Wow. Are you, how are you, are you finding light and joy in the midst of rising tensions of anti I'm creating it. Oh. Am I finding it? I am creating it. I'm creating it too. Am I finding joy? I, I, I find the joy in making people happy. Like I always said, when I do a show, I'm the one having the best time of everybody. That's there's, a, yeah. there's, whether it's 500 or 5,000 people in front of me, I'm having a better time than anybody. That's the secret mm-hmm. of being great right. at comedy. I really think that like that's one of the things that if you can figure out, and I think it takes years of experience and all sorts of other um, things, Yeah. but that if you are enjoying yourself, if you're having fun, Everybody else is having fun too. Again, my guru, one of my rabbis, one of my one of the people that I go, RuPaul says, if you're not having fun, they're not having fun, and that's something that you have to always sh- make sure. That's why. That's why when, when you texted me, when you texted me, you had Periel had a show and a Jewish event, and she uh, she texted me, is it okay if I do my anal joke? <laughs> that was the text. She's about to perform in front of Jews in. Tenafly T-neck. in T neck. A hundred, a hundred from f- Jews. A hundred religious Jews. She was performing, and she right before she goes on, she texts <laughs> me and Leo. Should I do my anal joke? No, I said, is it okay? Is it okay? And did you do it? I did it. And how'd it go? It was amazing. Yeah. It was an amazing show. <laughs> it was, as you would say, full of Mashiach energy. Yeah. Listen. You know, you're walking into it's a private event yeah. at somebody's house, mm-hmm. gorgeous. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, and it's somebody's. It was their like surprise big birthday, and oh. you know, there's a lot of pressure to really do a good job. Like you've been invited into like something so special for these people, and this guy. Um, and all I was nervous, but like all I kept thinking about was you guys. And I'm like, I've got this. Like, it's going to be great. And then, you know, um, but I'm not clean. Like, no, no, but they didn't hire you for that. They didn't hire you for a clean. They wanted something schmutzy to show that they're on the edge or whatever. How'd I'm, they get to you? 
through a mutual friend. I don't know if they knew. But, but the mutual friend said to them, she's funny. She's, she's going to be great, but she's not clean. I don't know what she said. What I do know is if they transformed their indoor basketball court into a comedy room, which was something else I learned from you guys. Because yes. I was like, where is this happening? There needs to be a dedicated space. She showed me a living room with like these lush couches. I was like, no, absolutely not. No. Get a hundred folding chairs of the most uncomfortable yes. folding chairs yes. you can find. Yeah, that they have to sit up and engage their yes. core that's, and be yeah, alive. That's, that's a, everything. A sofa is a disaster. <laughs> it's a death sentence. It's a death sentence for comedy. Yeah, death so sentence. They were all sitting. Now it was going very well, except the <clears> person. <throat> it's the person right in front of me is a seventy-something-year-old man from Vienna. Okay. Who is the father of the person whose birthday it is? Mm -hmm. the, the, they're dying. Like it's like it's going well. Everybody's having fun. This guy has not smiled once. He's deaf. No, what? he's Austrian. Okay. And I, I was trying to ignore it, and I was like, I finally was like, it's gonna kill the whole night if you don't address the elephant in the room, right? Okay, so. So oh, but I, it's all only happening in your head, but right. But you, you you understand that. But he's the only person you see, right? right. Like, the only one. The only the only one you see is the one not laughing. And I <clears> said, <throat> I don't know if this guy hates me or mm -hmm. he doesn't speak a word of English, but he has not smiled <laughs> once, and that kind of like broke the tension because right. then like I put it on him, right? Like it's not on me anymore. Um, and then. The, when I told the anal sex joke, he started laughing. Oh, good. That's when he <laughs> broke up. Yeah, okay. Good, 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 good. Yeah. Uh, Last night at the cellar, there was this woman up front uh, not laughing. The, and every, all the comics before said that this, this room's tough, this room's not good. It was a Sunday night at like um pouring rain outside yeah. and but they got there and whatever and there was a, the front row was people from argentina mm. and they weren't really and this one woman was just very stiff and i i got her with one of my jokes and like and i was in shock that that was a joke she she took and yeah. then i addressed it but the whole room or every every the comic was already crapping on them for being such a crappy right. audience um but that's it so 92nd street y is happening what and can then people expect at the 92nd street y a gift from A and H, I think. No, is A and H doing gifts or no? Um, I don't know. I'm sure mm. they're welcome too. That would. That's I thought you guys were working on that. I was working with Jackie. Oh, Jack Snacks. I mean, we could put a little frozen hot dog on every chair. Ew. <laughs> No, no. I um, asked Jackie if she wanted to put a cookie on every chair. That's cute. Thank you. That's cute. Okay. Um, but I'm sure, I, I mean, Seth is more than welcome to put some meat. Okay, so the, okay, so never mind. So what, the, what they can expect is... Um, what well, are you excited to talk about? What are you excited to talk the about? The exact situation of, um, of, of what's happening in the world right now and what it's like to, to be doing comedy in this situation, you know? Other people that are influencers are running around. They have what to speak about. They and clips to show where people were anti-Semitic and all that. And and um, and I don't have. I mean, I'm just he here to make them laugh. Mm. It's a different experience, you know. Um, so I guess as an influencer, what it is, as a comedian, what it is, as a podcaster, as a. Uh, I um. I think that I've one of the things that I've noticed that's actually been extremely powerful is that like when we talk about anti-Semitism, it gives. I think we should really change over to J Jew hatred. You and Brooke. Okay. I think Jew Brooke hatred. is onto something with with. Uh, I saw some comedian, horrible. Yeah. Do a whole take on anti-Semitism and what what it, what he thinks it meant, and he wasn't sure, and he Googled it, and it was anybody that speaks Hebrew or Arabic, and it's so. I think Jew hatred is much more. I think we had Brooke on, mm. and uh, and Brooke Brooke Goldstein, Brooke Goldstein. You know, I just thought, uh, and and I. I wasn't completely with the, but I think that's what it is. She was um, ahead of her time. She understood that the, you, you're messing around with this 
this word and no one knows what the hell it means. Yeah, and people just hate Jews. Just it, it's just Jew hatred. It's nothing to do with Palestine. Nothing. A, mm. a valve has been opened. Yeah. And now they can just hate Jews That's at right. will yes. and blame it on Palestine and blame it on and uh, you know. And they are so happy to hate the Jews. Thrilled, thrilled to just scream, "We hate Jews!" By you know, instead of saying "We hate Jews," free Palestine, free Palestine. It's just insane what's right. what's happening. Like hating Jews <clears throat> in America and all over the rest of the world and like breaking down like bagel shops, glass in like kosher restaurants in Houston. does not help free Palestine. In Houston, my sister lives in Houston. Their kosher restaurant, their kosher bakeries were all vandalized. It's disgusting. Where, how does that free Palestine? It's not. How is that free Palestine? That. It's, it's, just showing, it's just showing that you're barbarians. And you're living in a country that allows you to that. It's going to end. It's going to it's it's going to it's going to you're going to see how this is. I, I don't know the algorithms of of my of my Instagram, but I don't like and follow the crazy bombings and screamings mm -hmm. of, of Israelis that my child is missing. I, I'm more on the more positive side yeah. and I'm seeing politicians that are speaking out against um, Muslim communities that are doing bad things. Mm -hmm. um, not all Muslims, but the ones that are doing bad things. And uh, By the way, it's not just <coughs> Muslims. There are plenty of the, other um, people who have been very happy to get on the I Hate Jew bandwagon. Of course, mm -hmm. but the um, the it's yeah, fun to hate. Yeah, yeah, it's fun, and and, it, and they have a cause for it. But like the 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 president or the prime minister of the Netherlands mm -hmm. warning everybody that this yeah. is happening. This is just in Israel now, but it's going to happen in mm -hmm. your country and letting them know. And it's, uh, it's listen, our friends, um, who has been a guest on the podcast, Mike Salomonov, his restaurant Goldie in, um, Philadelphia was, they like surrounded it and they were screaming horrible, horrible, things that well, i mean well, this is a restaurant in <coughs> philadelphia like what what does it have to do with anything screaming about kill the jews i hate it's the not even jews. kosher <laughs> 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 it's just an israeli style uh, restaurant right they they're just no, serving falafel. they're just serving falafel and hummus that means you should go r r run to, to every halal stand and, and bomb them too horrible what's wrong with people horrible. what do you what what how is that helping anything but i like how <laughs> you focus on like the good stuff i think that um it, and it gives it to me mm -hmm. so it shows me it doesn't Not show me the instagram i meant in, obviously that's how the right. algorithm works the algorithm does work yeah. i um but i think that as a general note i really try there are some incredible groups that are bringing together muslims and jews and that's the kind of stuff that I yes. think is really important. But that's not what we're going to be talking about no. at the why. <clears throat> not at all. At the no. why, we're mm -hmm. going to be talking about Mashiach energy. Yes. You have some very interesting philosophies about the very spiritual and profound role of a comedian in yes. life. Yes, that too. And then also um, being gay. Mm -hmm. And being uh, ma married, and uh, I don't know, and also the the, the blessing of being able be able being able to work with your partner, mm -hmm. uh, different types. In of your case, that's a blessing. In my <laughs> case, that would be. Um, well, you, the, the, the blessing you have blessing. is that you don't work with your partner. <laughs> God, God forbid you should, you and him should be in business together. No. Oh my God! Somebody oh. would be in. Jail. No, but you guys are raising a child together. That's a full business of its own yes that's that's true. Ra raising a child is a family business there is yeah. schools de doctors there's there's clothing there's food there's a lot of things involved it's a family business a that's child, a really no? interesting yes that's i've never thought about it yeah like that. somebody that's very good <clears throat> though um somebody said to me it's um Having kids is like running a daycare center with somebody you used to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you had to get that in there. Uh, you had to get that. It was such a great clip right until you. It's, you, a, you, it, you know, it's a better clip now. There's a better clip now. Yeah. OK. Um, my my niece was in town. She has four kids. She had two kids <gasps> and they're twins. She has four kids Wait, within what? like 
five years of each, less than five years of each other. Less. I oh my didn't god, much know less. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, How old are they? Eight to like four. Yeah, four years of each other. Yeah. They have four year old. Yeah, twins? it's a full on job. It's a. Wait, it's, you have four a four year old twin niece nephew situation going on. Great niece nephew. It's my niece's kids. Got it. It's my niece's kids. <laughs> it's it. I'm the great. It's so funny that they they called me great uncle, which was the craziest thing. Because when I had a we ha I had a great <laughs> uncle. Oh my, my grandmother's my grandmother's brother came to America. They moved to Chicago. He was this big guy that came to the house and was like back in the days. There's ba back in the day when we were young, there weren't like eighty five year olds a lot around. Okay. People died at 77. You, you called it in. You, you, you're, you're done. We're, we're now people, because of heart surgeries or whatever, people live forever. But back then, he was the first like old guy we saw. Came to the house, had a gut, spoke like this with an accent. And um, in Yiddish, he spoke in, in the house and, and a fat cigar. And he was probably like 42. No, <laughs> he was well, back then in the 70s or 80s. And, like, and we were just like, Looking at it, you know, it was like, wow. And now I'm the great uncle. That's insane. With Leo. Leo's <laughs> a great uncle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That is so crazy. Yeah, it was. Do they call you Uncle Modi? Uh, no, no, we don't do titles before things. It's Modi, Uncle. Uncle I guess Modi, it's very Uncle. American. Israelis, Such an American Israelis thing. Don't Ew, do it's so. I feel like I had a great aunt too, who had a vet, like a like a very big mole on her face and one really long white hair coming out Stop. of it. Stop! And you didn't just discuss it with her. I was little, like I don't. I just I I just remember being like, oh, that doesn't look. Oh God. <laughs> Say something. See something. Say something. See something. Say, say something. something. Yeah. That is um, a crime to let people walk around like that. A crime. Really a crime. But who wants to be the person to say Me. that? Me. I'll say that. Hey, right there. <laughs> right here. Right there. That's it. Right there. You got. The you got. You got. Yeah. A hair coming out of your mole. You, you would really. One hundred percent. And they'll say thank you very much. Right. Yeah, well, thank I, you very, I would. Very much, yeah. I would. I would appreciate it. Um, okay. What else? What else? So that's that's basically it. Um, but we have the why again. The, we are at the why. It's gonna be not just like a regular. It's gonna be the 100th episode of the podcast, but it's gonna be much more uh, structured and much more like with a message and much more with um, obviously Mashiach energy. And it's gonna be a vibe to sit with fans. And I think I'm going to open with comedy, right? I think I should just go up and do I a little, think you can a do few minutes. I think you can do whatever you want. What Say say that again, though. Start with the 100th episode, <clears throat> a live taping. We're going to be doing a live taping of And Here's Modi at the 92nd Street Y called In Conversation with Modi. Uh, Periel will be uh, the one I'll be in conversation with. It's 100th. February. I was talking, and now sorry, she's begat. Sorry, that's sorry. how, it, but <laughs> at that event. Go. Yeah, that's how it's going to go. <laughs> No. The hundredth episode. That was what I. You I didn't said say, that. No, I in began. The beginning. Yes, I did. I did. I said this is the one hundredth episode. The one hundredth episode of And Here's Modi will be live taped at the ninety second Street Y. It's going to be called In Conversation with Modi. That's the title of it, and the, I'll be in conversation with Periel, and we have a surprise guest, Leo, and um, uh, we will be. Uh, it'll be. Uh, a structured episode of and here's modi and we're going to take questions at the end yes we'll do q a so make sure you bring good questions with you and um it's amazing and the tickets are available already Tickets are available on um at modilive.com oh, oh at modilive.com and at the Where? 92nd street y yes Speaking of which, ladies and gentlemen, we are going on tour. We are, we, me, Leo, are going on tour. Um, we have shows all over America. Look at modilive.com, find a show near you. We have uh, Dallas, we have uh, Orlando, Cleveland. We have an extra show we added in San Diego. We added an extra show at the Paramount in Huntington. We are in, um, in, in all over Pennsylvania, PA. Um, and uh, and uh, Minnesota and uh, uh, 
I, I, Minnesota. Minnesota. Where are you going in no, Minnesota? No, not Minnesota. D- Detroit. Michigan? Where's, Michigan. Michigan. Sorry. Mich- <laughs> MI is Michigan, right? <laughs> MI is Michigan. I'm going to be in MI uh, in, Mi- in Michigan again. And uh, tickets are at modilive.com. Be the friend that brings the friends to the comedy show. Get a ticket. And not only that, let your friends who you see know that live near that I'm going to be coming and they should come to see the shows. And it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Um, what, what about you? I'm Israel Chai. That's your thing now? That's my thing That's now. Your... My, it's my entire personality now. Is Am Israel Chai, mm-hmm. the nation of Israel lives. Mm-hmm. Okay. I listened to that song on loop. Am Israel Chai, Am Odavinu, Odavinu. That? No. Which one? Am Israel Chai, Am Israel Chai, Am Israel Chai. Which one? One second, I'm There's finding There's so many it. versions, no? This is the best one. one Odavinu, Odavinu. No? Rega. Oh, it's a newer version. Who's the singer? Eyal Golan. Eyal Golan, okay. Very nice. Okay, so that's a great song too. Um, and that's it. We are wrapping this episode that's up. That's it. Um, I'm so excited for the 90 Second Street 90 Second Street Wise and be Liddy. I want to say this. Yeah. That I met you, we've talked about this before, mm-hmm. almost 15 years ago when I was trying to hire you to be a cantor at my wedding. Correct. And I had heard somehow, I knew that you were a comedian, you were very funny, but I had heard that you come in like a full cantorial garb, mm-hmm. which I thought would be hot for pictures. Which is amazing. Any, any wedding I've ever done, the pictures all come out amazing. One thing I know how to do in a wedding is to set everything up for the photographer. Yeah. For that to be amazing. But you and your husband were cheap. No, my husband's was. My husband thought it was crazy. He thought it was a crazy idea. He's Israeli. He didn't <coughs> write, you know. But anyway, I thought about that when we got the 92nd Street Y thing that, like, somehow 15 years later, Hashem knew that, like, we were destined to um, be on this road together. That's right. So it's so crazy how incredible that we're going to be doing this event at this iconic Jewish New York City institution. Yeah, yeah. And it's going to be, it's something I'm revved up for. It's not like just another thing happening. I'm like super stoked. It's going to be super uh, interesting. What are you going to wear? I am working on that right now. I'm, I'm, do you what, have some ideas? I have that ideas. Can share it with me. Yeah, it's things that could be. You can sit. I'm not sure I'm going to do a suit because be sit, you'd be sitting a lot. Okay. They want to sit in a blazer. Okay. It might just be like you know, since it is an episode, the black T-shirt is the thing. You know, oh. it's it's still a part of the podcast. So okay. the the black T-shirt. I'm anyway, s- start sending your questions now for the yes. ninety second Street Y, just Great. so we can uh, get a feel of what you want to hear. And um, and thank you all for listening. Again, ModiLive.com for all shows. Thanks for being a part of the And Here's Modi family. And we will uh, hopefully see you at a live show very soon. Thank you, Perio. Thank you.